So, uh, hello to everyone and welcome to the fourth webinar on public administration as part of the Space for Critical Infrastructure series. My name is Margarita Krisaki. I'm the uh, Communication and Project Officer for Nereus and today we moderate this webinar which is about how space can boost the preparedness of public administration in a number of threats and natural disasters that affect their critical infrastructure and of course put at risk the safety of their citizens. So today we will discuss, as you can already see, with our high-level speakers, a few examples on how this can be ensured through the use of space. Uh, to remind you, we already implemented uh, the first three introductory webinars um, to give to give you an idea, we already had the webinar on the EU directive uh, on the resilience of critical uh, infrastructure. And uh, starting from uh, this webinar and the next to come, we will explore also how space can better monitor and safeguard critical entities in different domains, uh, starting with the first domain, which is public administration. Uh, also, to remind you, for this webinar, you may use the chat to pose your questions to the speakers. and. Uh, um, we are constantly monitoring it. Before I invite our first speaker um, uh, to, the, to the stage, uh, Valeria, uh, I would like uh, to mention that these webinars are organized jointly by Nereus and URICI. Nereus is a network of European regions using space technologies. Uh, and we are the, the only association that represents uh, the interests of European regions towards the European uh, space community. And of course, our mission is also to promote the benefits of space technologies for European regions. As part of this initiative, Nereus cooperates with URICI. And maybe, Cornell, uh, would you like to share a few words about URICI before uh, I give the floor to Valeria? Sure, thank you, Margarita. Um, so my name is Cornel Bogaert. Uh, I'm a project officer at uh, Eurisi, and uh, Eurisi is uh, a non-profit association. Uh, so we're based in, in Paris at the uh, premises of uh, ESA, and we represent uh, tw 20 uh, space agencies and organizations uh, across Europe. And so we also promote uh, the benefits of uh, satellite applications, so downstream space services uh, into wider society uh, in a number of, of sectors. Uh, ranging from uh, the maritime topic to um, smart cities, agriculture, um, and so we're uh, indeed, uh, it's a pleasure to work uh, with you, so to, to work together with Nereus uh, on this uh, webinar series on uh, critical um, critical entities, um, and so today indeed is a bit different than the introductory sessions, but uh, I, will leave, I will leave that up to, to Margita, so um, again to all the participants also, please uh, don't hesitate to use the chat and we will uh, keep that uh, in mind, so thank you. Thank you very much, Cornel. Um, and uh, it's my pleasure now uh, to introduce to you, as you already seen, Ms. Valeria Catalano. She is a market development officer at USPA, the EU agency for the space program. Uh, Ms. Catalano, we are very interested in learning from you more about uh, the projects, programs such as uh, GovSatcom and the applications that are at uh, stake regarding the security and safety critical missions and operations. Uh, the stage is yours. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks for this introduction and uh, good morning to everybody. I'm Valeria, Valeria Catalano, and I uh, work in the market uh, um, uh, development department at USPA. As uh, said by Marchetta, the USPA is the European Space Agency for the Space Program. Uh, I think you can see my slides. Please just confirm that uh, everything is fine so I can go ahead. Yes. With Fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, so just a few words about USPA. Uh, we are uh, in uh, this, uh, the European uh, Agency, European Union Agency. We were born as a GSA and uh, uh, we had in, in uh, charge uh, the um, uh, the GNSS uh, programs in particular. Uh, we had the, in our uh, 
task, we had the exploitation of the EGNOS and Galileo programs, this, their security and also the market development. But last year, we enlarged uh, the, our activities with the additional ones. So uh, from one year, more or less one year, we are in charge not only for uh, the GNSS program, so Galileo and Egonos, but also for the GovSatcom, that is the telecommunication program, secure te uh, communication, the telecommunication program, but also for Copernicus, the Earth Observation, uh, the Earth Observation program. Um, okay. Um, I work in the market development department where, uh, as uh, the, you can understand from the name of our department, we are in charge of the market development of these uh, uh, space programs. And uh, we, our activities are organized in, the, in several uh, market segments. So, uh, considering the, the critical infrastructure, as you can see from these uh, slides, the critical infrastructure infrastructure are split within a three market segment, in particular infrastructure, energy and raw materials, and insurance and finance. In this, uh, uh, within uh, this market segment, you uh, will find some um, earth observation application, some GNSS application, and also some gen synergetic application where there is the combined use of uh, earth observation and GNSS. Of course, the critical infrastructure are the typical uh, GNSS applications. Um, as you know, uh, the GNSS uh, can be used not only for uh, localization and navigation, but also as a timing source for the synch synchronization of uh, the networks. Uh, there is an European uh, directive that uh, defines the critical infrastructure as an asset that is uh, uh, fundamental for the maintenance of the vital societal societal functions like, for example, health, safety, security, economy, and a disruption of this uh, or one of these um, asset can have some significant in, uh, impact and are considered uh, critical infrastructure, all the telecommunication application, uh, the energy application and, uh, and the financial transaction and uh, financial applications. Uh, and you can see from this slide that the typical telecommunication uh, application are included under the market segment named infrastructure, the energy under uh, energy and raw materials, and uh, finance under insurance and uh, finance. Uh, more details on, the, on the each market segment, in particular on the, these three uh, market segment, can be found in our web website because we published um, a market report that is public, that is available, you can download from the website. So I invite you, if you uh, want more detailed information, uh, to download this uh, market report. Uh, this market report. Um, so, um, as I was saying, the telecom applications, uh, the critical infrastructure includes the, te the telecommunication application, and in particular the cellular network, the, uh, the telephone network, the professional mob mobile radio, the satellite communication, and the small cell. For energy, uh, we uh, consider critical infrastructure, the phase or uh, measurement units, and for finance, all the financial transactions related to uh, to banks and stock and chains. Uh, he, as um, EUSPA uh, had in charge in the past years uh, the um, GNSS program, so uh, Galileo, the European GNSS program, we were focusing and we were uh, developing applications that were focus on the use of uh, Galileo, uh, in particular uh, 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 Galileo. But then we will see that with the new mandate of the agency, we 
started working also on the integrated uh, applications. As you can see from the market report that I said already is available in the website, this, uh, uh, the critical infrastructure is a market that is, uh, that is growing and the telecom application um, represent the majority of the, of the market, in particular 84%, 84 for, uh, percent of the shipments and 80 percent of the revenues and of course within the telecom application the um, uh, the 5G uh, uh, is included under the cell, digital cell, cellular network market and uh, thanks to the deployment of the 5G, this market is uh, uh, expected to grow in the, in the next uh, 10 years. But uh, which are these uh, the, the main trends uh, and challenges uh, we, for this uh, uh, application? Of course, uh, for telecommunication, uh, there is the need to have uh, higher data rates and more stringent requirements for the, uh, for the synchronization. And so this is a trend, but it's also a challenge. So, uh, better synchronization accuracy is also a, a challenge. And uh, in particular, another important challenge, challenge is the robustness to uh, interference. The same can be said for the energy also um, in terms of challenge, also for energy, but as well for finance, there is ne the need to have an increase at the re resilience to, re to interference. And in particular for finance, there is also a new regulation where the traceability to use it UC, UTC is uh, required for every uh, financial transaction. So uh, based on these uh, uh, trends and challenge, we as market uh, department, we are working in order to increase, uh, we have been working in order to increase the Galileo adoption. And uh, we have been working uh, in order to increase uh, the resilience of the European infrastructures. Uh, because as I was saying, this is an important uh, challenge. And uh, uh, Galileo, uh, the uh, European GNSS program, is uh, showing uh, very good performance also in the terms of timing accuracy, uh, performance that are even better than other uh, satellite constellation. But if you consider the market penetration of Galileo, it's still the second uh, or the third constellation uh, of use uh, after the GPS. So all our effort as market development offer is to increase uh, this Galileo penetration. And uh, uh, all the projects that we have funded in, in terms of R&D have these uh, objectives. Uh, the, to increase the Galileo penetration. And we think that also the deployment of the 5G and the fact that the market is, uh, is growing will help us to increase uh, the penetration, the Galileo penetration, especially in the telecommunication market. I will show you uh, just one, uh, two uh, examples of projects that we have founded. Uh, one is a route. Uh, uh, you know that uh, Galileo has an uh, important differentiator. One of these is uh, the authentication. And uh, this project, route, uh, has uh, as objective the um, testing uh, of the, uh, the introduction of the uh, Galileo authentication in the, uh, in the context of, uh, of the 5G telecommunication network. Uh, the information on the project are available uh, in the, um, online. You can see here the link of the project if you want more information. But uh, just an important aspect that I want to, to highlight is the fact that within the consortium that is developing a route, there is a, a telecom operator, uh, an end user. So this is very important when uh, there is the need to create a consortium and to apply to some uh, calls and tenders uh, for use, but it's important to include an end user because this um, 
uh, will uh, uh, will uh, represent uh, um, the fact that then after the, the uh, re, uh, development of uh, the prototype, uh, there will be the commercialization of the product and the real use of the product. Another important project that maybe uh, is more interesting for you is this Broad GNSS. This is an Horizon 2020 project. It's a, it's a pre commercial procurement. Uh, what does mean a pre commercial procurement? It means that uh, um, the consortium uh, is awarded and has an objective to procure uh, through. Uh, to procure, uh, in the case of Broad GNSS, uh, sol solutions for the synchronization and monitoring of critical mobile uh, broadband com communication infrastructure for public protection and disaster recovery. Uh, this project, as well as the previous one, we think will contribute to increase the Galileo penetration. Uh, this, the consortium includes some public authorities, but also some private companies. They launched a request for tender that is currently open for submission of proposals and the deadline is the 2nd of September. Uh, I really invite you to, um, to, the, to, to check in the, uh, in the website, uh, the link is in the slide, to check um, this, uh, to, uh, this request to tenders because mm, is uh, uh, devoted to you as public authorities and maybe you can uh, create a consortium and uh, apply for this uh, for this tender. The tender is open, I repeat, uh, until uh, the first days of uh, September. But uh, this was the past. Let's speak about uh, the future. The future uh, for uh, USPA means that we will uh, uh, continue working not only on Galileos, but also on the um, new space programs that we have in charge, in particular Copernicus, Gov.com, and in the last uh, days we um, had in charge also the SST, uh, sur uh, Satellite Surveillance and Tracking. So, uh, as a use space market development, we will continue developing and designing applications for telecom and energy and finance, but we will focus also on a synergetic downstream application, as for example, the infrastructure site uh, selection and planning uh, or the pipeline monitoring. And uh, uh, an example of integrated uh, applications for the critical infrastructure uh, monitoring monitoring is shown in this uh, slide. Um, and uh, uh, Galileo, of course, can provide not only the synchronization uh, of, of the data, but also the positioning and the guidance for the monitoring of the personnel and the assets. Copernicus can give uh, satellite Im images to monitor uh, the status of the, fa the facilities and GovSatcom, the uh, secure communication program, can provide some uh, real, uh, secure and reliable uh, uh, telecommunication cap capabilities in case of uh, crisis or in case of exchange of uh, uh, sensitive information. And then uh, SS SST can provide information on uh, space object uh, uh, re-entry that uh, can uh, affect the critical infrastructure. Uh, now uh, I just will um, highlight some uh, um, uh, the main aspect of the GovSatcom, the, the governmental satellite communication that the USPA has in charge. And uh, uh, today uh, there is uh, uh, why GovSatcom, we have decided together with the European Commission to create this important satellite communication because today there is a, a fragmentation of users split among uh, military, governmental and civilian. So there is no a real uh, sub optimal use of the satellite uh, resources and there are issues uh, uh, for the interoperability among these, uh, um, these users. So uh, these were the main reason why uh, there is the need to have an, um, a, a GovSat, a 
uh, to have a governmental satellite communication program in order to better uh, optimize the uh, demand and the supply, support all the uh, security feature and foster interoperability. Uh, within uh, GovSatcom program, we have uh, different use case. Uh, one is uh, uh, crisis management, uh, another one is surveillance, and the third one is uh, the key infrastructure, where within this key infrastructure, we included not only uh, telecom energy and finance, but also the transport infrastructure, the space infrastructure, and also uh, the, the diplo diplomatic network um, for uh, each member states and uh, the European Union. Uh, within this, um, within this uh, GovSatcom, we have developed an, um, a project that is named Entrusted, that is um, a project uh, founded within uh, Horizon, uh, Horizon 2020 and the main objective is to, of this uh, entrusted project is, is to establish col collaboration and coordination among the different uh, uh, satellite communication or governmental users. So one of the main tasks of the project is the definition of user requirement, use case and also user technology. The, um, the the consortium is composed by several member states, uh, plus in particular uh, uh, 13, and uh, also seven uh, European uh, Union entities. Uh, but I will finish uh, my presentation here because I know that my colleague from <laughs> SAT will, uh, will speak uh, more in detail about, about the uh, trust. Yes. So uh, this is my last uh, slide. and. Um, Thanks a lot. I'm ready uh, for questions. Valeria, thank you so much for your insightful presentation. I think we all got an idea on USPAS uh, activities, projects and programs on critical infrastructure. And of course, you emphasize the great potential of uh, Galileo and Copernicus uh, on, on this uh, matter. Uh, I may remind to, um, I would like to remind to the, to the audience that they can post the questions in the chat. Uh, and uh, we will take care of them uh, in, in the next minutes. Uh, for now, we move on to our next speaker, Ms. Paola Sameno. She's the uh, RTTI project manager from the European Union Satellite Center, SATSEN, and she will share with us, uh, amongst others, um, a few examples on how users can benefit from ongoing projects um, enhancing operational services. Uh, Paula, the stage is yours. Um, thank you, Margarita, and thank you, Valeria. Uh, I hope you can hear me, no? If not, please. Yes, uh, okay. yes. <laughs> so, yeah, following um, Valeria's presentation, which was a very good uh, introduction to, to Entrusted, I'm going to go a bit more in detail on how within the project, uh, Entrusted, that is an Horizon 2020 project, we are working with uh, user needs. So, okay. So basically just a, a brief introduction of Satsen and our unit. Satsen is a, a, also an EU agency. It's located in Torrejón de Ardoz, in, very close to Madrid. And uh, it's an agency working in the common foreign and security policy. So we uh, basically support uh, this uh, the external action service providing earth observation services. But on top of that, we participate in a number of, of projects with the main objective of supporting all the key uh, research and innovation activities in terms of technology and also in the EU space program. And one of the activities that we are doing, or one of the projects that we are following is, is this one, is Entrusted. So you have here in the bottom the, the main activities that we do. Um, so I think that Valeria uh, made a, an introduction. I just go a bit more in detail of what is uh, Entrusted and the, the objectives. So the, the project is uh, coordinated by USPA. And, uh, and the main goal, let's say, is, uh, well, there are two main goals. The first one is the identification of user needs and requirements, and, and the other one is to elaborate a research and innovation roadmap of user technologies. And for that, we need also to analyze the current status and the uh, forcing evolution of user technologies. So these are the, the three main objectives and how they are interconnected. 
So our task in SATSEN is to coordinate the, the identification of user needs and the elaboration of requirements, so the first one. And uh, we have to elaborate a user requirement document, which is now in preparation. So hopefully we can have it uh, finished uh, after summer. And, um, and right now we are interacting with all the partners to, to elaborate this document. So how do we, uh, how are we working to, to let's say, to, to get user needs and to engage a final user? So basically in Entrusted, the, the consortium um, established this uh, network of users, which is composed of the project partners and uh, external collaborators. It's not a closed network of users. So basically, if you want to join, you have to, you, you can go to the project website and contact USPA and uh, they will give you the, the indication of how to join the, the network of users. So today the network of, of users is, uh, as Valeria presented, composed of 13 member states which are partners of the project plus two others which are external collaborators. And we have also EU entities which, are, which can benefit, so can take advantage of, of, of these uh, future secure satellite communication services in their operations or for the stake, their stakeholders. And you have a, well, today we are seven EU entities in the project, uh, namely Satsen, well, I, I sorry because the, the, the resolution is not very good in the image, but it's Satsen, uh, the, the GRC from the Commission. Uh, I'm missing some of the EDA. <laughs> sorry, and, um, and the external action serving CPCC. And on top of that, we have three external collaborators which provide us with inputs, which are our Frontex, Europol, and DigiEco. So these are the, the, the network of users as uh, it is today. So basically through this network, uh, we make sure that uh, all users are contacted or have the, the, the possibility to contact the entrusted. So if you are a an user and you are interested in, uh, in the services or in the final results of the project, you can contact either your member state representative if it is an entrusted, or you can also contact uh, through the website of the project us and we will let you know how to, to go ahead with this. So uh, through this interaction, what we are doing is to, to assess the, the different user needs uh, of the different user communities that can benefit from future GovSatcom services, which are mainly um, communities of users working in border, like uh, in border surveillance and border activities or border authorities. We have also maritime authorities that also can benefit from these services. We have uh, law enforcement bodies, uh, civil protection, humanitarian aid uh, stakeholders, um, military force, of course, and uh, the external action. And also, uh, and this is the topic of today, key infrastructure operators and uh, managers, let's say, because it's not only the ones operating the infrastructure, it's also the, the, the owner of the infrastructure that can benefit from these services. So to, um, let's say that to get the needs of the user, what we did in the Entrusted is to run a new wide consultation in 2021. So it took uh, several months, it was open to, 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 to users, so they could provide, they could answer, let's say, a survey, which was split into uh, a survey for non-experienced users and another survey for uh, experienced users. So basically they could give different details to the future services no? and, and so on. So we gave, through each of partner, let's say of the, of the network of users, they contacted their final users, so police, uh, border authorities and so on in the national territories. And then they gather all the inputs and send them to us and we, uh, are putting, we put them together and we are extracting the requirements from those uh, inputs. Also incorporating the know-how of the consortium. So basically we take what users said, we analyze it and we put that requirement for the future services. And this is where we are today. So basically this process that you see in the picture uh, will end with the delivery of, uh, of the document, which is the D2.3, but it's okay, this uh, naming convention of the project, which will be the user requirements document. So the survey was uh, quite, uh, let's say, performing good because uh, even though we identify more than 450 users and, and at the end, 
as you know, when you have a, a survey, and it's, it's not very easy to get uh, people answering because, well, okay, you, you need to motivate them. But still with this, we get uh, 155 questionnaires, individual. So we are taking the input from all these users. Um, so you can see here, because uh, Valeria presented before, uh, the, the, what the, the use case families. And you can see the, the interest of the user answering. So there was like a big interest in crisis management because of course, uh, uh, the actors that were participating were very involved in this, but there is also a high interest uh, from key infrastructure operators and, and managers. So you have 26% of the, of the answers that were related to that. So basically users that expect to use secure satellite communication services for their operations. Um, I will go to the next slide. So just a brief overview because of the satellite communication service. No? So how a user is expecting to benefit from, from these services. So basically you have here what is a, what is a represented here like a telecommunication satellite, no? and you have the terrestrial network to control the satellite and to receive uh, and transmit data. And then you have the final user segment. So basically the, the, the user can benefit in a bunch of uh, different ways because uh, it's a satellite communication can always either complement or be the main uh, resource to, to perform communication between different actors. No? And this is what we call the user segment. Um, I think that Valeria already presented this. So these are the a summary or example of, of which are the critical infrastructures that are um, considered no, so far. So at least the one that we identify that can benefit. And, and always keeping a, an eye on the public administration because at the end, these critical infrastructure are the ones that are affecting uh, the public interest. So basically we have transport infrastructure. So you have a air, air, air transport, uh, road transport, uh, rail transport, maritime transport. So these uh, are like uh, infrastructure that are key for the society and for public entities. Other, uh, let's say, infrastructure that is very important is uh, space. So basically we need to, to see how uh, secure satellite communication service can support the, the operations and the protection of a space infrastructure. So basically we put a focus on the space segment, but also on the ground segment, and also in the synergies between uh, different services. So basically how can we find synergies between Galileo and Egnos and uh, the future of SATCON, so how these services can, let's say, enhance one each other. Uh, then we have also some uh, infrastructure related to the institutional communications uh, of the European Union, which uh, incorporates the Europol communication network and all the diplomatic activity and, uh, and the echo, of, uh, the DG echo of uh, offices that are outside Europe and need to have a solid and stable communication uh, capacity. Um, and then we have an, what we call, because initially they were not identified, but then through the process we identify other infrastructures that uh, were uh, that could benefit from from gov.com. And it's uh, these are like, uh, for instance, uh, f uh, finance uh, infrastructure, so the networks, how we can support with this. Uh, we have also energy grid, so how to use uh, like. And, and, and I didn't say, but in this other infrastructure, basically uh, secure satellite communication services will serve as a backup, okay? It will be like a backup service uh, in case that terrestrial network are not uh, working. Um, well, I, I will go to the next slide because I think that I have here like a more detail. So you have the, here the, the key infrastructure that, uh, that I just um, presented. And in the last one, you have all these infrastructure that are benefiting from gov.com as backup communication links. So basically the energy, energy grid, oil and gas um, platforms and, and, and distribution networks, uh, all these chemical, biological, radio, radiological and, and nuclear weapon infrastructure, uh, weapon, not sorry, uh, infrastructure, which are uh, uh, also needing these services. Then we have prisons, and finance, ICT, and telecommunication network. And uh, how this, um, let's say, key critical infrastructure can benefit uh, from gov.com is different from each of them. So basically, for some infrastructure, like for example, maritime infrastructure, the, this, uh, this secure satellite communication services will be the main communication link because you know that they are in remote areas and basically they will need the uh, um, this service, no, because the rest of the network are not uh, available. But also, as I said, in this uh, other infrastructure, 
it can serve as backup communication link. Then uh, another service that can support, uh, be supported by satellite communication is uh, these backhauling services. So basically, if we have to transfer the, the traffic of the network through a, an alternative uh, um, communication uh, mean, let's say. And also, uh, as I said, in the case of space, as inter-service synergy. So basically, how, um, for instance, here at Satsen, we provide the, the Copernicus service in support to the external action se uh, service. <laughs> So uh, how we could benefit from this secure satellite communication to provide our geospatial intelligence uh, product to the remote uh, missions and operation or missions that are in the field. And hey, Paula, have... Paula, sorry to interrupt you uh, because we would need to, due to time reasons, we would need to, we would oh. need to fasten up a bit. Okay. Maybe you can close your presentation with two sentences and we will come back to you with questions because we already have uh, some questions uh, in the chat. Okay, yeah, I basically was finishing. So basically, I just want to say that we still uh, are facilitating user uptake activities. So even though for those that are not familiar, you have a free online training, uh, which is quite good to, to get introduced to, to Secure Satcom. You have the, the link here and you don't have an, any final exam, so you can just take it. And uh, here is uh, the entrusted contact. So basically, you want to contact us. Um, just go through, either you write an email to, to this uh, email address or you contact us through the website. And this is all, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Paula. So, so very interesting your presentation, uh, especially the Entrusted Project. Myself, I have many questions, but I, I think uh, I will give the, the stage to the, the, the priority to the chat, to the questions for the chat. Let's start with the last uh, question from Mirko from um, uh, Veneto region. Um, it's also a member of, of Nereus. He asks regarding Entrusted and Gov.com, may regions play a role, a role or only states are considered users? No, no, as I said, the, the states, the member state representative are represented national users. So if you are interested, uh, you can write us in the, to the, in the project website and we will put you in contact with the, your focal point. So how to see how you can interact with the entrusted. Thank you very much. And maybe to the next question, we can include also Valeria. It's from uh, Kinga, yes. Ms. Kinga Kruzeska. What are the next steps for USPA concerning SecureSatcom, GovSatcom, and uh, what we can expect, expect in the upcoming year or two? Uh, yes, for sure, uh, um, there will be, we will be launching many R&D programs and uh, uh, related to Horizon Europe and also fundamental elements uh, that are the two main important R&D programs that is managing USPA, but for in particular for GovSatcom, I invite you to um, always consult our webpage uh, because there, there will be all the information because we will launch uh, new uh, R&D um, calls uh, soon uh, explicitly focused on GovSatcom. Okay, uh, th thank, thank you so much. Uh, and maybe one last question before we move to our next speaker. Uh, maybe very shortly, if you could please um, uh, elaborate uh, on the connection between space situ situational awareness, so the SSA program and critical infrastructure. Uh, yeah. Uh, as you know, uh, SSAT, SSAT and SSA was a new um, activities that uh, EUSPA is managing, uh, but it's a very new activity in the sense we had the mandate to manage also these, uh, uh, these tasks in the, last, uh, in the last weeks. So we are working from, uh, we are working on this and in the slides I just highlighted some example, uh, but uh, we are working on it uh, and um, uh, we will be more detailed <laughs> in the future with the new activities on, uh, on, this, uh, on this program. Mm. Yeah. I, okay. can, I can complement yeah. from a technical point mm -hmm. of view because at the end um, there, there are some use Very cases. shortly, Paola, yeah. because <laughs> we need to run to the next. Yes. Yeah, basically the, the, the synergies that are identified in the, today are how, for instance, databases or services to provide uh, collision services or, 
or yeah, you know, debris or something like that, how they can use satellite communication as backup in case that terrestrial communication are not working to communicate to different uh, databases around the world. Because as you know, SSA is a is a international activity, so basically they are cooperating also with other states. Uh, so this is yeah. So this is uh, from the technical uh, perspective. Thank you so much. Uh, we will come back to you, of course, uh, at the end of the of the webinar. Uh, now, maybe it's the time to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Massimiliano Artieri, who is a business development manager, government and security SBU at Planetech Italia. Um, and he will share with us a civil emergency case from Puglia region in Italy. So it's, it's quite interesting. It's a concrete use case example. And if there are, I, there are public administration actually in our audience, maybe they can take some notes in the part and participate in the discussion afterwards. Uh, Massimiliano will speak about the, how the use of remote uh, sensing techniques can improve the monitoring of hydrological problems in Puglia. And uh, the case you are going to talk about uh, is the one of asset. Asset, for those who don't know, it's the And I think we lost uh, Margita. Yeah, I think so. So I think uh, I can take over from here. Um, so yeah, maybe Massimiliano, if you're ready, uh, I can see that you're already uh, sharing your screen. So please uh, go ahead and um, you can start with the presentation. I hope uh, we can have uh, Margita with us again soon. So uh, we will check um, what's going on. But uh, in the meantime, you can uh, maybe also already start your presentation. So. Okay, thank you very much and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I will complete just a bit of background that Martina started to introduce. So uh, asset, uh, especially regarding asset. Asset is the entity that uh, works uh, very closely with the soil department uh, in Regione Puglia, which is in the south of Italy, that is responsible for monitoring all the hydrogeological risk events. And uh, we had a collaboration with them uh, that I will uh, explain and I will show during my presentation. So these uh, that you can see in this introductory slide are the people that are being responsible for this project in collaboration with Planetech Italia. Uh, for who doesn't know about Planetech Italia is uh, an Italian company uh, which is an important national but also international reference in the heart observation business uh, since uh, more than 25 years. So which are the uh, the task uh, for which Asset Puglia is in charge. Uh, mainly, uh, I, I would uh, uh, resume everything in implementation of urgent intervention. So, especially what regards hydrogeological hazard analysis uh, risks, as I as I mentioned at the beginning, completion, of course, also the uh, ongoing mitigation infrastructure to mitigate this kind of phenomenon. So, landslides and uh, all these kind of, uh, of phenomenon and. Uh, um, uh, finally, also the infrastructures consolidation. So uh, this is the reason why we are presenting today this uh, uh, interesting uh, collaboration that we had with them because it really uh, is really connected uh, with the infrastructure it, they, themselves. So, which was the project uh, area, the area of interest? Uh, they uh, selected at the beginning. Of course, you know the the Puglia region is. Uh, uh, broadly interested by this kind of uh, phenomenon, but of course, uh, to, to start to have a kind of, uh, let's say, a pilot project, uh, they uh, have chosen to, to, to select uh, 16 sites uh, that you can see here. So to concentrate the attention on these 16 sites, uh, of course, they, have character, they are characterized by uh, kind of uh, hydrogeological uh, phenomenon, and it is, in this case, they are slides. How the satellites and the hard observation techniques uh, services can help uh, in this in this field, um, and especially to to monitor the ground motion. So the, the main application, especially through uh, interferometric uh, uh, techniques, are. Uh, to discover unknown landslides that are not known uh, at all. So also subsidence uh, subsidence phenomena, of course, uh, is to perimeter and classify with the more accuracy the landslides and thirdly to analyze the interaction with the constructions and with the infrastructure that could be of many many typology of course as we mentioned 
can be construction uh, uh, construction to mitigate the phenomenon, but of course can be also, you know, uh, motorways, roads or railways and so on. Also buildings, of course, and uh, uh, cities and uh, uh, these kind of things. And uh, for specifically for civil protection and for soil defense, uh, the application, the main application are well, an improved comprehension of instability phenomena, because of course, if you um, connect and integrate these interferometric data, the satellite data, with also some ground uh, data that or ancillary data that you collect on the ground, you can uh, understand much better these kind of phenomena. You can have support, as I mentioned at the beginning, to design better and with more accuracy also the mitigation construction. You can, of course, also after that, monitor the effects that these kinds of construction have on the on the landslide, for example. And at the end, you can evaluate, you can have a, a broad evaluation of the effectiveness of the intervention itself. So uh, in this project, of course, uh, beside uh, the, the involvement of uh, uh, Asset Puglia, a lot of, you know, of uh, geological studies uh, that were responsible to realize the mitigation construction have been involved. And uh, so uh, we thought that the best way to interact with all of them, with all the stakeholders involved in the, in the project, were to uh, schedule some collective theoretical sessions. So uh, let's say the knowledge has been spreaded uh, along all the, the, the stakeholders, among all the stakeholders. And uh, for each site uh, also have been scheduled uh, individual session uh, to, uh, you know, to have, a, as we, we said at the beginning, to have a better comprehension of the movement analysis of each site. And also to discover if there were something that uh, have ne would have never been uh, discovered before. And the third, uh, will also uh, discuss together with the with the, with the ge ge geological uh, studies also the uh, development and verification of suitable design solution. So this was let's say the the preliminary phase that uh, uh, was at the beginning. And I will provide now some uh, interesting uh, use cases on the sites uh, that have been selected at the beginning, and so. Uh, which were, let's say, also the uh, the interesting uh, data and the, the interest the consideration that we were able to extract from this analysis. So, for example, here we are in Bovino. As you can see in the in the historical series series of of, of the data, there are some peaks and some uh, cyclical. Uh, cyclical movements that you can see very clearly, and uh, it has been discovered that uh, this uh, this kind of cyclicization uh, has derived on the um, on the multi aquifer fed, and of course it was also dependent on the rainfalls. Uh, so uh, the mitigation construction that were that have been designed for this specific uh, site uh, really took in consideration this uh, cyclicity. And uh, so uh, this is the reason why it was uh, designed and realized with more accuracy and really, you know, looking at the situation of the site. Uh, same thing has been done for Celle di San Vito site, as you can see here. So uh, you can see how an area recently stabilized with a construction Con continues also to uh, exhibit uh, notable movements. So in this case, for example, uh, we were monitoring uh, especially the, the, post, the, post, the post construction phase. Uh, so TULS has a reticus displacement. Reticus is the name of the platform that Planetech designed for the inferometric uh, uh, phenomenon. Um, are really uh, important and really fundamental uh, after the construction because uh, you can see for example in the football field that you can see on the left side of the screen uh, how is still uh, characterized by strong movements uh, you can see the the red the red points let's say that uh, uh, are uh, let's say witness of this uh, strong movement so 
probably if uh, we had the, poss the, the possibility to uh, have this uh, information be known uh, during the construction or before uh, making this kind of construction, there would hardly have been a football field there. It was not possible to, you know, to design and to realize this football field. So, uh, proceeding and also looking to the to the future of this uh, the, the prosecution, let's say, of this project, uh, it has been clear that uh, if. Uh, yeah, due to the nature of this uh, of this project, so 16 uh, sites uh, that there were very localized. But yeah, you can imagine if you are going to do a uh, more wider analysis to all region, as in this case, as in the slide is uh, displayed, for example. So uh, in this case, we are in Regione Friuli Venezia Giulia, and you can see that we are covering an area of uh, about 8,000 square kilometers and we have something as uh, uh, 12,000 points to analyze. And uh, uh, so it would be very, very difficult also for who is very expert in uh, anal an analyze this kind of data to, you know, to really rationalize the information and to look into this, uh, this mess. So the next step is, of course, to rationalize this huge amount of data and to make it readable for who is going to take the decision. So. Uh, the next step is really to divide the, the area of interest in cells, so we can pass, uh, as you can see, from 12,000 point, uh, 12, uh, points to uh, 111 cells, so it has been really rationalized, and you can focus really only on 128 priorities instead looking at 12,000 points, which is uh, really crazy. And this is the interface of, let's say, the evolution of the of the system. So from reticles displacement, which is all, all only displaying the points, to reticles safe land, which uh, gives uh, a, an, over, um, uh, an overlook of the entire area, just uh, allowing me to rationalize all the information and focusing on uh, uh, the area uh, which really needs uh, some uh, attention. And of course, also this, uh, this, let's say, prioritization of the area does not take care only about the ground movements, but can be also uh, connected to other attributes, as for example, the presence of buildings or presence of infrastructure, uh, sensitive infrastructure, for example, motorways or railways, and also changes of uh, land use that we can detect with the uh, alt observation techniques. So this brings me to the end of my presentation. These are my contacts if you are interested to to go yeah uh, deeply uh, in the in the topics or in the techniques and uh, everything you you need and uh, hope it was clear and I'm open for any question. Thank you very much, uh, Massimiliano, and apologies uh, for the interruption before. I, there were some technical problems, but uh, but I'm back. However, I still cannot see the, the chat, so maybe I need the help of uh, Cornell, if he's still online, uh, in case we have any questions to Massimiliano. Uh, can you see Cornell? With... Yes, uh, I'm, I'm still here. Um, so for now, we don't have uh, new questions in the chat. Okay, um, so... Maybe maybe I can ask uh, maybe I can ask one question to Massimiliano. Then um, uh, your your presentation it was very insightful, Massimiliano. In many ways, uh, you refer to techniques regarding interferometer and so on. Um, however, a question that might be interesting also for the public administration it's the challenges. What are the challenges? And if we uh, what what are the techniques and applications uh, regarding um, such as reticus that can be used uh, in a multi-departmental way? Yeah. Thank you for your question, Margarita. Yeah, uh, indeed, uh, the, the the questions, the two questions that you made are really connected with the, between them, because uh, uh, I think that one of the challenges uh, of the application of these, uh, especially for let's say the evolution of the of the project that I that I showed, so reticles displacement, is the probably a multi departmental uh, use, or sometimes also the use between different entities inside. Uh, 
uh, within the the same uh, territory, the same region. Uh, so you know, for cultural prob probably barriers, especially in Italy, but I guess also around Europe, it's very difficult sometimes to uh, make yeah to you know to make work this kind of collaboration cooperations between uh, uh, different de departments uh, within the same region structure but, but also uh, within different uh, entities so i would say that definitely the the, the most challenging uh, task that we have to face in the in the, in the future is to um, let's say allow and habilitate this kind of collaboration cooperation between uh, different departments, different entities that, you know, should should talk between them. So, uh, in our opinion, uh, I think that also Planet can act as a kind of facilitator to uh, to make easier this kind of exchanges and this kind of cooperations. Hello? Thank yes. you so much. Yes, okay. yes. <laughs> You're still uh, there. Uh, also, uh, something maybe Massimiliano would be interested to hear about, I think you didn't mention that in the presentation, uh, regarding the procurements, what's the role of procurements in that case? <clears throat> maybe you can uh, share a few words here. So, yeah, um, in this case, of course, the the role of, of, of the, uh, the role of the, let's say, the the entity that was responsible in charge of the project was, of course, uh, I, I mentioned it briefly at, at the beginning of the of the presentation, uh, was to uh, you know have a better comprehension. Let's say uh, the this technique allowed the, the 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 entity to have a kind of uh, time machine, so uh, they were able to see uh, the past. Uh, looking uh, from one, historical one. data to present. exactly exactly from historical data so to understand better the phenomena so the landslides mainly uh, to to have all the information that they missed in the past looking at the present to you know to design the construction and also of course looking at the future uh, uh, monitoring uh, how the construction would have mitigated the the phenomenon in the last slide so uh, we very often, you know, look at these technique, uh, techniques as a kind of a time machine. Thank you very much, Massimiliano. Um, if we do, we have other questions in the chat. Otherwise, we can we can close. Maybe, uh, Cornell, you can confirm. Yes. That. Um, so no further questions in chat, but I I just wanted to come back to one of the the earlier questions sure, um, sure. related to the space situational awareness because that's interesting because actually uh, so the the newly proposed directive um, it um, the scope is enlarged to to ten different sectors so public administration is one of them um, but space is also one of them. Uh, but actually, the space segment is only um, in the directive. It will only uh, apply to the ground uh, segment of of space. So only the the ground uh, infrastructure. Uh, so that's uh, if you're interested in that. That's definitely something that we will also discuss later on um, in one of the. I think it's actually the the late the last session of our series. So um, again, I will I will link here in the chat um, the event page for our uh, future session. So there you can find an overview of what we still have in store. Um, but uh, but maybe Margrethe, you want to elaborate a bit on that? Yes. Uh, so I think uh, th thank you, Cornell, for that. And um, we, with with your comment, we can close. Actually, uh, our next webinar will be in uh, September. The the final date will be announced uh, in the next weeks, together with the description and the agenda. Um, uh, you, th there will be a follow up of this webinar, and in this follow up, we'll also provide more information about uh, the next webinar. Uh, I would like before I close to thank all the speakers, uh, Paola, Valeria and Massimiliano for their great contribution. Uh, I think there are many, many questions, but unfortunately it's a one hour webinar. However, we'll provide your presentations to the to the participants afterwards and there they can find the contact details and they can uh, get in touch with you. Um, so I would like to thank you very much for your attention. This, this for your attention. This is our last uh, webinar uh, before the summer break, and uh, uh, thank you very much for your uh, participation. And see you soon uh, in September. <laughs>